Hi everybody, it's Jody Emery here, the wife of Mark Emery, the Prince of Pot, and I'm at Cannabis Culture Headquarters, the retail store behind me, the magazine office right here, and the BC Marijuana Party Headquarters and Lounge on the top floor right above us, so make sure you come and visit and go to CannabisCulture.com. I'm going to start doing weekly shows. We've decided that we need some more content for POT TV and in addition to doing regular videos, we're also going to do live broadcasts every Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time with Cannabis Culture editor Jeremiah Vandermeer. And you can see the first episode of that posted at CannabisCulture.com and we'll be streaming every Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific, so you can get an update on the news about what's going on in the cannabis world and what's going on with Mark and everybody here. So, speaking of Mark, uh, the last most people heard was that he had been moved from Seattle to South Nevada, the brand new private prison there called the Nevada Southern Detention Center, and we thought he would be moved from there to Taft in California, the prison he's meant to serve his time at, uh, within a couple days or maybe a week. Uh, but after three weeks, Mark was still at Southern Nevada Detention Center and it was very challenging for him. I got a letter from him in the mail um, going over everything. They don't have or didn't have fresh fruit there. Um, he was able to go outside but because he hadn't seen sunlight in over five months at Seattle, SeaTac uh, FTC, he got sunburned right away and so he couldn't even really enjoy the sun anymore because he hadn't received any of it for so long, but he still sat outside and that's what he said he wrote his letter uh, as he sat in the shade outside and he was trying to keep physically active for a while and trying to keep busy, but it was difficult for him without having the books and the magazines and newspapers that uh, I and others had been sending to him, as well as all the mail that he had been receiving. And in Seattle, we got to have weekly visits, which was so special for us to see each other twice a week, uh, every week. And uh, without him being in Seattle, with him being in Nevada, I was not able to see him for three weeks. And in that time, uh, our, our friend Michelle Rainey, one of Mark's co-accused, along with uh, Greg, marijuana man behind the camera, uh, she suffered from cancer and she lost her battle on October 20th. Uh, which was very sad for everybody who knew her and for the movement which uh, received so much optimism and upbeat positive uh, go 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 attitude from Michelle uh, so it was challenging uh, to go through all that while Mark was away and he found out and he was very sad and we held a live tribute uh, for Michelle from the BC Marijuana Party Lounge so hopefully you got to tune into that but that period of time was very jam-packed of a lot going on so three weeks later Mark still hadn't been moved and for me everything had just flown by. Uh, for him it was a very long ordeal and he was suddenly moved to, um, which we thought he was being moved to Taft when I didn't hear from him on last Wednesday. But then I got a message from him from a, an automated phone company and I wasn't able to actually talk to him because there wasn't money on this account and it's a very complicated process uh, being able to communicate with your loved ones in US prison but I was able to look up his register number on the BOP, the Bureau of Prisons website and discovered that he was in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma so there's actually a gigantic prisoner sorting facility there it's a enormous place you can look it up online you can find the address at the BOP website and go to Google Maps and you can see what it's like but there's literally an airport landing strip that has airplanes drive right up to the prison unload prisoners and move other ones away so Mark has been there since about Friday he said it was a very grueling trip they spent about five hours chained up inside a bus uh, driving from southern Nevada to some place. He didn't know where he was going. And then they were put on an airplane and for about seven hours they were flying from different cities and picking up different prisoners. And he was the only Canadian on the airplane uh, and the only person from his prison. So of course that would be very uh, challenging and disorienting to be completely alone and shackled up and not knowing where you're going or when you're going to get there. So. Mark finally, after about two days of traveling and settling in here and there, he finally got to Oklahoma City and that's where he is right now. Uh, however, when he was finally able to call me this last weekend, he let me know that he's found out he's no longer serving his sentence at Taft in California. He's been redesignated to serve his five-year sentence in Georgia, uh, right above Florida, 
pretty much as far away from here as they could possibly get him. Uh, we knew that Georgia was one of the possibilities of one of the facilities he would go to, but he had been designated for Taft, so we were planning and getting everything ready for me to go down to Bakersfield and drive to Taft, and all that was getting worked out, and now we've been thrown for a loop. So, to Georgia, I'll be going. Uh, a whole new experience for Mark and for me, uh, but we'll be looking for supporters there to help me out getting around and finding out where he is. I should learn that today. He's supposed to call and let me know where he's going to go because there's a prison in Georgia called McRae, and that's where a lot of Canadians are. And in the U.S. federal system, they have certain facilities for foreigners. It has to have INS, Immigration and Naturalization, so that when Canadians or Mexicans or other foreigners finish their time, they can be deported and sent home. So Mark is now going to be serving in Georgia, and we thought it would be McRae, but apparently there's a new, brand new private prison for foreigners and he'll be sent there and we don't know where it is or what it's called and I can't find any information so we're trying to find out where he's going to be but as far as we know it's somewhere in the state of Georgia. Uh, so Mark uh, doesn't know when he'll be moved there, it should be in the next couple of days or weeks but really you never know and they could just drag it out and maybe somebody has it in for him or maybe he's just going through what every other inmate goes through. Uh, but either way, it's, it's really horrible that he's being shuffled around and cut off from the world. Um, so he would really, really appreciate some mail. If you go to freemark.ca or cannabisculture.com, there's a big link on how you can send Mark mail. And I've posted the mailing address for Oklahoma City. So hopefully when you send him mail, he'll be able to get it this week. Um, Americans especially, your mail moves much faster than from Canada. So if you send him some newsletters or some pictures or printouts, send him anything you can because he has no idea what's going on in the world and I'm the only person he can talk to. And you know, as much as we keep each other going, it's hard for him not to know what's happening in the rest of the world. And he often wonders if people have forgotten about him or if people even care. And for me, it's hard to try and convince him and tell him, yes, people care. I know many of you viewers, you care and you're doing stuff for him. But because he's locked up and doesn't get to see any of it, it's hard for him to understand that. And that's what they do to prisoners. They make them feel entirely alone, entirely cut off, um, and not part of this world anymore. So he would really appreciate some support. And here's our cat, Curtis. Speaking of support, I just thought uh, in our store, the 420th issue of High Times Magazine and our dear friend and supporter Tommy Chong, as always, is wearing the Free Mark t-shirt in this article where he talks about the 420th issue of High Times and the history of that magazine being part of the counterculture and Chong's own time going to prison and how that really changed him. So. This is just a short blurb, but he's wearing the Freemark shirt, and I encourage everybody to get the Freemark shirt at CannabisCulture.com slash store. Uh, it's a great Christmas gift. It's a great thing for any time because not only are you supporting our store and Mark's empire that he built up that I'm now looking after, and not only are you spreading the word about Mark and people will recognize your shirt and they'll ask questions about it and they might Google Mark Emery, but the message we're delivering through the Freemark campaign is to bring people's attention to the entire war on drugs. Because Mark is not the only prisoner of this drug war, not, not even close. There are millions of people around the world persecuted and suffering and even killed in this senseless war on cannabis and this war on drugs. And Mark is imprisoned with a lot of people who are there for drug offenses and marijuana offenses. And these are peaceful, non-violent people who are just on the wrong side of the law. What the law says is acceptable or not. So even though you've got pill pushers and doctors and all these people out there selling Coca-Cola and lethal, deadly substances, it's the users and growers of cannabis who suffer so much. And Mark is just one of many. So when we say free Mark Emery, we're saying free all the drug war prisoners and go learn about the horrific abuses of the war on drugs because if they if people are shocked about Mark being pulled out of his home country by a foreign government for marijuana seeds, then they should read about some of the other horrific stories and terrible things that happen to Americans and other Canadians and people all over the world and who suffer far worse than Mark and don't have the support that we have. I mean, I'm so blessed. 
Uh, Mark is so blessed that we have everyone out there who care for us. I get cards in the mail, I get donations from Mark's commissary, and that really does keep us going. We so depend on that support, and we're so grateful for it. And so I want to turn it around, not just to benefit me and Mark, but everybody out there. So all the prisoners' wives and all the children without their parents are helped somehow, at least by getting the word out there about prohibition and how it's a failed policy that destroys lives, wastes our money, causes prohibition-related crime like gangs and everything that's wrong. It's, it's really caused by prohibition, and that's what we're still trying to do here. Our goal is to end marijuana prohibition. And we received another great gift. Uh, I've got to show you. We've discussed this in previous videos before, roach art. There's an artist named Cliff Maynard, and he uh, was featured in our second last issue of Cannabis Culture magazine um, with our wonderful Cannabis Culture headquarters manager, Shantika, on the cover. Uh, we did a spread about the roach art, and he basically takes roach papers and cuts them up and makes these incredible mosaic pieces of art. And he offered to do one of me and Mark from a photo he saw online. And he sent us the actual original. So this is made up of real roaches, really smoked by real potheads, <laughs> and cut up into little pieces to make this beautiful uh, piece of artwork. And I just wanted to share that because it's really quite fascinating. You know, when we talk about the cannabis culture, and people wonder, well, what do you mean by that? Like, so you smoke pot, that's not a culture. But when you think of the art that comes out of cannabis and the writing and the creativity and the photography that comes from cannabis, uh, the entire industry that creates rolling papers and grinders, and cannabis is a culture with music and movies and art and celebrities and, and even our own lingo, our own language. We use all sorts of words and and communicate with people in a certain way because we are a culture. We are the cannabis culture and that's part of what Mark created with Cannabis Culture Magazine and, and everything to bring attention to this because we are all part of this family but many of us are being persecuted and lives destroyed. And so while I want you to help Mark and there's some very important things to do such as write your representative in Congress or your member of Parliament and telling them to send Mark home um, that's really where the thrust of this campaign for Mark is going to go because we need our Canadian government to approve his transfer home and the US government to approve his transfer application. And on that note, I actually did an interview the other day for two hours with a representative for Corrections Canada to go over Mark's application and his history and whether it would be a safe place for him to come home to and what kind of support system he has here. So for two hours I got to explain how Mark is an amazing person and really when I discuss who he is and what he does, even as an objective viewer I would be able to say this man is amazing and he's done so much and he's truly a good person who should be brought home. So that campaign still continues and that's what the free mark shirt is for and the buttons and the posters and everything else we have online so you can spread the word about Mark and help get him home to me hopefully by next year. So the soonest he could be back with your support is back in Canada at the end of next summer and out on full parole by this time November next year so he could actually celebrate Christmas with me and, and with me a gift. So please go to freemark.ca and cannabisculture.com. There's lists of ways that you can help, sending letters to representatives, emailing or calling, and I'm going to be working more on the letter campaign for both Canadian and U.S. government. So stay tuned by signing up to the Freemark newsletter and checking us out at facebook.com slash Mark Emery or slash Prince of Pot slash Jody Emery. And you can everything that we're doing and keeping up on and I'm going to write a blog post so I can share what Mark's been going through and people can spread that around on the internet to let people know how Mark is doing. So freemark.ca, cannabisculture.com. Thank you so much everybody for your continued support. I hope you'll tune in on Fridays to the Cannabis Culture Weed This Week show and keep watching the Pot TV videos which we'll be putting out a lot more of every week from here on out. Peace and pot everybody. No more drug war. Thank mm -hmm. you.